Another short presentation from the virtual classrooms of the PLC eUniversity website. What is a PLC? This is the 19th in the Factory Rat series, and this one addresses how does a PLC work? How does it function? Although we call them programmable logic controllers, they are not all controllers. Now, everything you see in front of you, these are all controllers. A controller has a processor, a power supply, and fixed I.O. All these are controllers. Even though on some of them you see additional I.O. modules that have been added, aside from that, all of them are controllers because they have their own fixed I.O. These are processors. They have no I.O. They are standalone processors that have to be supported with a chassis, a power supply, and I.O. module. Take a look at a processor. A processor has no I.O. The default memory structure does not have any I.O. assigned for input and output images, whereas a controller or a processor after I.O. modules have been assigned is going to show file 0 and file 1, outputs and inputs. This is the default configuration for a MicroLogix 1400, which is a controller. It has fixed I.O. So it permanently has the first six words in memory assigned to be used with outputs and the second eight words. So the first six words is an output image and that output image we call it an image because it's an image of what the processor wants the outputs to do. It also has an input image in this case eight words and this is an input image or an image of state of the inputs. Then there's a status file. This is fixed. This cannot be changed. And then, of course, you have data files that each data file is the first element of an array that can be expanded for binary, timer, counter, control, integer, and maybe floating point. And then, of course, ladder logic resides in the program. By default, you get one program file. In this case is called LED2. There one more time. The only difference between a processor and a controller is that a processor is a component of a PLC. A controller is a PLC in its entirety. A processor has no I.O. permanently assigned to its memory structure. A controller does, but you can expand file 0 and file 1 down at the bottom if you add more modules to that controller. So we have an output image where we will store the state we want for the outputs to be in. We have an input image where we will store the state of the actual input fill devices. We have a status file and then we have data files that we use in our program and our program reads from everything down below and writes to almost everything down below with the exception of some words in the status file and you cannot write to the state of an input. Let's rearrange our graphic a little bit. Take a closer look. We have memory and a processor. In this case, the processor is a piece of hardware with a CPU chipset and memory. One of the chipsets is communications control. Most controllers, processors have two communication ports, channel zero, channel one. And this gives you external access through the communication ports to memory. I've redrawn memory to show an input image, ladder two, and an output image, and I show the data tape off to the side, but notice that the green O0 colon X is the output image shown to the left and below. Same thing with the input image. We add I.O. modules. Now we have a programmable logic controller. And by the way, there is no difference between a processor with a power supply, a chassis, and I.O. modules, and a controller if the amount of I.O. is the same. It still serves the same purpose. We have an input module that has push buttons, proximity switches, and it's connected to the processor by means of a backplane in the chassis. We also have an output module that's connected by the backplane in the chassis. The first step for a controller when you put it in the run mode is it does some housekeeping, but the first step that we're concerned about is that it gets the input image. That means that it goes out onto the backplane and collects the state of all of the input screw terminal voltages one module at a time and it fills up the input image image in memory with the state of all those inputs. Then it executes the program. Remember the program can read anything in memory and write to almost anything in memory, but specifically we write to the output image. And then the output image is sent out across the backplane to the output modules one module at a time. And then it does the whole thing over again. That is the complete scan for a PLC. Collect up the inputs into words in memory. Execute the program 
against the state of all the bits in memory, the conclusions are also recorded or written into memory, especially into the output image, and then the output image is transferred out to the output cards, and then it does it all over again. Now, there is a fourth phase in there, and that is communications and housekeeping. I cannot overemphasize this enough. When the program is scanning the ladder file, the processor never goes out and looks at the state of inputs or updates outputs. It runs the program solely against the values stored in the input image and it writes to the output image. The I.O. and the back plane are completely out of it during the program scan. And that is how a programmable logic controller works.